Come and worship the one who is the light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. Let, Let us, us rejoice. rejoice. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was not his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Let, Let us rejoice. rejoice. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Let, Let us rejoice. rejoice. we'd start with a bang <laughs> because we're going to end as we always do with silent night holy night and we're going to sing away in a manger and it'll be quiet later and we'll dim the lights but we wanted to rejoice it felt like the need to shout hallelujah christ 
is born, Jesus is coming into this world tonight, just as exciting as the first time. Let me welcome you. My name is Reverend Heather Joy James. I'm the minister here at Oak Ridge United Church. I know most of you, and most of you know me, but I always like to introduce myself just in case, and because we are online as well, and people can join from anywhere around the world, and we've had that happen, friends and families and neighbors, and this is just one of those times to do that. It's good to connect and be here and have something to experience together, to celebrate, to recognize, to honor that Jesus came into this world, that God gave us love in this way. Let me also acknowledge the space and the place where we are. The Creator breathed life into this land and her peoples, and from time beyond our reckoning here, the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples have blessed this place through their care and concern, and their relationship with the land is central to life. And so we pay our respects to the elders, past and present, and to all future generations. We pray for the future peace of all communities and peoples who call this land home. And I'm going to invite, I don't know who from the family is coming. It says Ken and Kelly Fessenmeyer family. So I'll invite Ken and Kelly and whoever else is coming up to light the candle. <laughs> okay, just the two of you. Sometimes there's a gang that comes with you guys. I just never know who's going to be behind, so that's good. And whoever's reading, you can... Okay, great, Kelly. We light the Christ candle in the center of the, our Advent wreath. Yeah, I'll just go this way. I'm going to be your microphone holder. Oh, that's okay. There you go. The Christ candle is lit with the other candles of hope, peace, and love, and the, we, and then, we, we, all the Christ candle. Okay. All right. Okay. okay, we lit it. Thank you. Good. Yep. We're going to sing. to worship is on the screen. Your part is in the red. Our Advent waiting is over. The Anointed One is arriving. Let us praise God for the coming of Jesus Christ. The journey is ending. The Prince of Peace will be here. Let's join our hearts and minds in prayer together. Great God of the universe, on this Christmas Eve, we pause to prepare our hearts for a most beautiful celebration, your birth and coming to earth as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Clear our minds so we can focus on you and the joy you bring to us through your gift of freedom, healing, and wholeness. May the same thrill and anticipation that filled Mary, the chosen mother of Jesus, consume us and draw us close to you. May our spirits cry out, Alleluia, with the host of angels who first delivered the good news of great joy to humble, awestruck shepherds that, that night so long ago, the news that literally one day would be heard around the world. Our choir will sing for us now. No room.
ask you if you think you can do two things at once. We have um, a wonderful Christmas story video to watch about the birth of Jesus and how that came about. And there's children that are in it performing, and it's lovely. And the next thing that's happening is our offering in the service. And so I thought, I think people can watch and pass the plate to the next person at the same time. So you are invited to joyfully and consciously place your financial gifts and offerings in the plate that Reverend Stephen is going to pass around. He'll give us a moment to get some. can enjoy it that way together. Can I get, maybe let's try to participate with some, I think because... If you weren't here this morning, we lost our one screen, so we're, we're down to one. We did, there were people on ladders and plugging and unplugging things. This is not working. We have one. It's okay. We can do it. <laughs> we can manage with the one. And if you need to crane your head around when you're standing for a hymn, that's okay, too. You can nudge your neighbor for that, too. But it's only on the one video that we're going to have. So um, I think maybe we should dim the lights a little bit. Could we do that? Alicia's on her own back there running sound, lights, and video. So we will give you a moment to try to sort that out. And then she can start the video. Thank you. And then while we're doing that, I think Stephen can pass things around when we're ready. Have you ever wondered what we might see if we could pull back the curtain of time to that very first Christmas? If we could, I imagine the story began in heaven, something like this. God was looking over heaven's balcony one day, shaking his head at all the wrong things people were doing down on earth. Oh man, this isn't quite what I had in mind when I created earth. I feel so far away from my kids down there. Why? It's just hard to be friends with people when you don't like what they're doing. I think it's time. Time for what, Lord? Time for us to step in. Shall we read as a army, Lord? Take you the lesson? No, I don't think we should send an army. Maybe just one person. What person? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! Lord, if we're sending just one person, we'll have to be someone very powerful and very strong. Because there's tons of people down there. No, they don't have to be strong. They'll be going as a newborn baby. A newborn baby? baby? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! Lord, this plan is rather risky. A newborn human baby is small and weak. This baby must be born to people who will protect him. Maybe a great ruler or mighty king? Actually... I was thinking I could send him to a young peasant girl. His heart is beautiful and full of courage. A peasant girl? Brilliant! They won't be expecting that! My lord, I see you're planning to take Earth by surprise. No one will be expecting a newborn baby born to a humble villager. But what good can a baby do? This will not just be any baby. I'm sending in the Prince of Heaven in disguise. The Prince of Heaven? Lord, this is too risky. Sending the prince in disguise as a tiny baby, born not to kings but to humble villagers. Surely our prince cannot be born in a cottage. He must be born in a palace. You're right. He shouldn't be born in a cottage. You. He'll be born in a stable. A stable surrounded by animals who will hide. Those who are looking will find him, and his mission will bring all people closer to me, even if they do something really wrong. When the prince is done, nothing will get between them and my love. Can we leave some clues for the people looking? Like in the stars? Clues in the stars? Sure, why not? We can make one huge one that points to him. Can we sing for him? Yes, can we sing? God looked at their hopeful faces and his heart was touched by their love for the fence. 
All right, you can sing. Yay! But not in front of the whole world. That would just be weird. And no kings or rulers. How about we sing for some chickens? That's a lonely job. Those blokes could do with some cheering up. Brilliant. They won't be expecting that. You know the rest of the story. An angel visited a humble girl with a courageous heart and told her the good news. She will have a baby and he will be the prince of heaven who would help earth to be close to God again. As planned, the baby was born in a stable about as far from a palace as you can get. A group of wise men noticed some strange clues in the stars. They packed their balloons and followed the star right to a baby. And of course, a bunch of lonely shepherds were guiding their sheep when all of a sudden the sky was lit up by a thousand of angels singing. Nobody would ever expect that. say a word of prayer. With these, dear gif- with these gifts, dear God, accept the praise and thanksgiving of our hearts, which rejoice in your goodness and love. Let our gifts point to your presence in the world and further your dream for the world through Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. We have some scripture and some carols, some scripture and some carols, and then a little reflective meditation. That's my way of saying it's not a real big sermon tonight. (laughs) Um, And then some scripture and some carols to weave through. And our first scripture reader is Wendy. So Wendy, come on forward and read Micah for us. The scripture is from Micah, and it's chapter 5, verses 2 to 5. <clears throat> now you are walled around with a wall. All right. Yes, yeah. Siege is laid against us with a rod. They strike the ruler of Israel upon the cheek. No, I don't think we have the right one here. Just a minute. Now, Micah 5. Yes, but oh, it should be. Yes, I just just started one. <laughs> a little bit too soon there. Okay, the ruler of Bethlehem, but you, O Bethlehem, and if Eph- Ephrathah, who are one with this, one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is a rule to rule in Israel, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give, give them up until the time when she, has, she who is in labor has come brought forth. Then the rest of the kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure for now, and he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he, sh- he shall be the one, one of peace. If the Assyrians come 
into our land and tread upon your, our soil, we will raise, him, raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. I think I'm <laughs> a little bit before and after the <laughs> exact reading. Sorry. You can leave it there. You can leave it there. Oh, okay. We're gonna sing. We're gonna sing now. Uh, oh, little town of Bethlehem! If you were here this morning, Stephen um, read to us alternate lyrics from this. I'm gonna have those in mind every time I sing this song. Now we're gonna sing the traditional way that we know, though, each and. <laughs> of Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 33 is Gracia who is also our office administrator and a, a school student at the Vancouver School of Theology. We are so happy you're with us tonight Gracia. Luke chapter 1 26 until 33. The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month of, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, "Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you." But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, 
Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. I was just making sure. Thanks, Alicia. <laughs> we are going to sing. Hark the herald angels sing. It'll be on the screen for you. 48. <laughs> Chapter 2, verses 8 to 20, and Reverend Stephen will read, The babe is born and worshipped by shepherds. <clears throat> Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing good news of the great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. 
When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. We're going to sing Angels We Have Heard on High, Voices United 38. <laughs> officially Christmasing, right? No one has to go back to work. Not for a little while, not for a few hours or days. The lights are up. The presents are hopefully wrapped, most of them. We have plowed through the errands and unfinishedness, and sometimes for December, what can be the long, dark, downright sorrowful days to get here. And then, on Christmas Eve, we sit tight, or as the military are so fond of saying, we hurry up and wait. The trees, the family, the friends, the fullness, the groaning world, the ache, the incompleteness. We need to sit here for a moment, sit here in our cherishing what we have, and sit here in our 
missing what we've lost, sit here in our almost-ness. Then a baby will be wrapped in a blanket and laid down before us, and we will sit there for a minute. We will cherish the Savior we have. We will yearn for the peace on earth, goodwill to all. In our almostness, we will breathe. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. God with us, never leaving us. God with us forever. I want you to wonder with me for a moment, what would our lives be like if Jesus had not yet been born? A few minutes, a few moments before the birth of Christ, the world was completely different. Sure, the same, the day to day. We have these moments in time in life and the birth of Jesus is one of those where everything changed and yet life went on. Something new was revealed to us. The universe is constantly expanding. We know this now scientifically because we have learned. We can look in telescopes and see far off in the distance. There is more, more, more than we ever could have imagined. This is something that God has continued to reveal, unveil to us. And in this season of Advent, I wonder if this is a time to unwrap that, to unveil that concept. That if it's true that the universe is expanding and if you follow science like I do, then yeah, that's what's going on in this world. If the universe is constantly expanding, we and our understanding of what is out there and all of the things that God has created and made also get revealed right here, right here, right here, and right here, everywhere inside of us, in ourselves, in our relationships. You know, and let me just have you cast your mind back. Who is the person in your life now who you have known for the longest and been in relationship? At some point in our lives, the scales tip. For me, it's my mother and my father. And at some point, I'll say, my children. <laughs> These people who we know so much about, and yet for so long, my relationship with my mother and my father, but I'm going to use my mom as the example. I remember realizing that my mom was a person, like an actual person, when she went back to work. I'm a middle child. I have an older sister and a younger brother. And my mom was home looking after the three of us running around and needing lots and lots of care. And at three, four, five, six, seven, I was like, mom is mom. That's who mom is. She's not a real person. She's mom. <laughs> but then something new was revealed to me. Mom could go out in the world and other people needed her the way I needed her. She started going back teaching at the pool, teaching swimming lessons and water aerobics and lifeguarding. And I learned that I could take swimming lessons from someone else. And my mom was someone else's teacher. I was like, no, that's my mom, not a teacher. <laughs> more was revealed to me about who she was and this person who was everything to me. I, my mom was everything to me when I was little. She was the lady. She was the best. She gave me all the things, it helped me when I needed it, and showed me things and taught me everything. And then all of a sudden I realized there's way more. 
And then when I was a teenager, I was like, wait a minute, mom, you have opinions about things that I don't agree with. <laughs> we disagree about things and you're not just a parent, you're a person who's thought about things, who's struggled with things, who's gone through something. More was revealed to me about who she was. It doesn't mean it didn't exist before you and I know that, but I could not see it. I couldn't experience it, even though I was so close in relationship with her. My universe through childhood was constantly expanding and being revealed to me in that loving relationship and then in the rest of the world. Let me turn here for a moment. Modern day prophet and Gen X hero, Tyler Durden, or rather Chuck Palahniuk, put it this way. You know how they say you only hurt the ones you love? Well, it works both ways. You only hurt the ones you love, and that works both ways. Around the table at Bible study this week, we were discussing how family can be a joy and a pain in the you know what how we can get into the holidays and the holy days and want to huddle around the fireplace and laugh around the table, and there's nothing like family to get under your skin. Someone at the table at Bible study put it this way, oh, I get along fine with my family. We always have a good time together at family get-togethers. We just don't talk religion, politics, or money, and we're fine. <laughs> I guess that's one way of doing things. At Christmas time, we gather in church to hear the story from Scripture in through the ages, from the Old Testament and in to the Gospels, where we hear the story of Jesus' birth, the prophecies of what's to come, and then the fulfillment of that, Jesus. The story of Jesus' birth has been recounted in so many different, diverse ways. Our planet is teeming with stories, songs, paintings, drama that got their start from this story. The reproductive energies show no sign of wearing off for this. But even more impressive, I think, are the lives that continue to get written a fresh start with a new birth. A new birth, the story of this birth. Day after day, men and women, young and old, and everyone in between, feeling more dead than alive, in hearing the singing or seeing the story, rediscover the unspeakable and beautiful preciousness of life. The story of Jesus' birth gets reproduced in human lives today. Here, you are witness and participant over and over and over again. The birth of Jesus is a birth with a message. It takes the entire Bible to complete this message, but the birth is the core of it. In Jesus, God is here, present, available, active, and alive to give us true life to the full. So this is something of a present, a surprise to unwrap, to uncover, to reveal, to unveil, to recognize expansion. When we are open and we open and receive the gift of God, first given to us at Christmas, we find other gifts nestled in the package. Joy, peace, hope, purpose, forgiveness, love. More than 2,000 years ago, the people of God were looking and longing for a savior, but they didn't expect Jesus. I really loved watching the children they won't be expecting that. I can't do that accent. New Zealand, I think it was. It was New Zealand. Thank you, Fiona. You were just there. You recognized that. Yeah. <laughs> they won't be expecting that at every turn. Hmm. Today, now, we get to join in the celebration as we hold fast to the gifts of Christmas, the unexpected joy revealed to us and share this. I want to leave you with a quote from Father Richard Rohr. 
When we speak of Advent or preparing for Christmas, we're not just talking about waiting for the little baby Jesus to be born. That already happened 2,000 years ago. In fact, we're welcoming the universal Christ, the cosmic Christ, the Christ that is forever being born, incarnating in the human soul and into history. So yes, Jesus was born and we celebrate that birth day, that historic event. But we don't just look back and we remember. It matters to those of us who feel like we need a new birth and our universe is expanded, for whom it is not enough to sit in the trouble and the rubble of this world. We long for those silent, holy nights where Jesus' peace is what overtakes. So here's what Father Richard Rohr encourages us to do, to sit with our breathing as a way to participate in the mystery of the incarnation, as if our very breath. So let me, let me give you this as an exercise. Every time you take in a breath, you are repeating the pattern of taking spirit into matter, into your lungs, and thus repeating God's creation in humankind. Every time you breathe out, you are repeating the pattern of returning spirit to the material universe. In a way, every exhalation is a little dying as we pay the price of inspiriting the world. Your very breathing models your entire vocation as a human being. You are an incarnation like Christ of matter and spirit operating as one. This, more than anything we believe or accomplish, is how all of us, either knowingly and joyfully or not, continue the mystery of incarnation in space and time. Okay, that's what I wanted to leave you with. And I'm wondering if maybe, hmm. We were going to sing Away in a Manger, and the children were going to lead us. Stephen, would you go see if they would come? Because we're going to start the song. <laughs> Juliana and Esri, we're going to sing Away in a Manger, and I'm going to invite the big people to uh, stay seated. Sorry, grown-ups. <laughs> and the little ones are going to come and sing for us at least the first verse. And then beyond, yeah.
we were practicing after church and there was a whole dance routine and a lot more loudness than right now, but that's okay. We did our best. It's almost bedtime for some of us. <laughs> okay. I want to introduce um, Silent Night, Holy Night, and Alicia's going to dim things. Did you guys already get your little candles? Oh, they're there. Kelly will pass them out. We'll get that going. There's little tea lights for us. I thought in the spirit, each sound of people springing musical endeavors on you. <laughs> We're not doing one now, but I wanted to tell you the story. Silent Night, Holy Night was a poem written by uh, a a minister in Austria, and he went to his friend's home on Christmas Eve. He trekked through the snow with this poem, and he asked his friend to compose some music for it. His friend played the guitar because their church's organ had been uh, destroyed, and so they composed on the guitar and then came back to the little town church and sang Silent Night, Holy Night. And that's how it was written on Christmas Eve, like two hours before the service. They came up with this. So sometimes last minute things work out. <laughs> oh, I love that. Check your light, make sure it's working. We apologize if your battery is out. Yes, go for it. Light them up. <laughs> We've got a couple who need... Kelly, there's some at the front whose batteries aren't working. We'll just do a check and hold yours up if it's not. If you need a light, we're here for you. Thank you. Wonderful. Stay seated and let your light shine.
word of commissioning and benediction. May the love of God surround us with song. May the love of Christ surround us with light. May the love of the Holy Spirit surround us with strength throughout this holy season and all the days ahead. Amen. We'll have one more quiet, reflective moment just to take ourselves out into the evening. Sheila's going to sing one more song as we just gather up. So just take this time to reflect on all that you saw. Maybe ask yourself, what, what sparked for you? What was God pointing to in this service, in this time? What are you grateful for tonight? It's good to be here with you. Thank you all for coming. We will see you again in the new year or next time.
One more thing just before you leave. Ichan, I'm told that the choir really appreciated all your hard work this whole fall, and they just wanted to give you flowers. And at Christmas, we give big flowers oh. in the form of poinsettias. So that's for you, Ichan. Thank you.